asking the number of respirators. Hmm? Sorry, sir. Um, I, I have just two questions. One is a question. The second one is a clarification. I, I know that um, with our increase... Sorry, my name is Rabi Abdella from the NTA. I, I know that, you know, um, with the increase in our case detection and reporting, you know, this means that we really have to step up our acts in terms of uh, contact tracing. And I know that we don't have enough personnel for that. The National Broadband was launched just yesterday. I, I want to find out. We know that, you know, technology is such that we can use it to close the gap in human resource for health. And the same thing applies in this case. I don't know what you're already doing in that regard. The effectiveness of the broadband in this regard, in deploying it to contact tracing and all of that. Then secondly, I need more clarification on the incident in Ekiti. I'm coming from the fact that, yes, the young man from the, the American was said to have died from complications. If the driver who drove him to Ekiti later on tested positive, that means the American had COVID-19. If he now died in that um, hospital, and you are now saying, on, with due respect, Honorable Minister, you are saying now that it's not a case of COVID-19. Because we've had you know, reports emanating from uh, the Afeba Balola University where students are saying they don't feel safe being you know, kept back in that you know, institution in view of what had happened. Why is Afeba Balola University still in existence after what had happened? Thank you. Well, hello. Honorable <laughs> Good afternoon to you. My name is Dr. Rafa Ayemeri, uh, MD Solution Magazine. Uh, if you observe, COVID-19 has become a, a global threat to our economy, health sector, religious organizations, and even our human existence. If I may ask, are you sure we can win the war against COVID-19? Well, thank you. Uh, that's, a philosophic, that's a philosophical question. But I think I'll, 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 give you, I'll say something. But in order to uh, come down to NTA's uh, uh, question, first of all, I do agree with you 100%. Our strategy is detection. Not only detection, early detection. They do say that if you are not strong, you must be quick. And we want to be quick in detecting our cases and uh, also aggressive in doing constant con contact tracing so that we identify any seeding of the infection that has taken place as early as possible and reduce the case load, hope to reduce the case load. So we are following that. That is the job of NCDC, working with state governments. Every state has a public health department. Finding the cases as they come in is the work of Port Health Services. And they are also trying very hard to increase their presence in, at the airports. As you know, the government has now reduced international flights to two landing sites to create more focus on those who are coming into our country and also placed uh, certain restrictions, put certain restrictions in place. As for the Akiti uh, case, the testing we have done was, the first one was, they say it was inconclusive. And we asked for a repeat, the repeat came negative negative. And I think, if I remember correctly, that it was done a third time and it came negative. So we can only say it was negative. Now, the indices uh, on ground is that that gentleman had also spent time in Ibadan, in Ibadan, before going to Ekiti. And the driver, if he's positive, which is the case, of course, it looks like a puzzle, but we must not assume that if it's positive, it must have been. Positive, Sorry? Positive? Yes. So why did you call it? That's, that's a question. Now, you cannot assume that he must have got it from that one person because I believe, if I'm correct, it's a taxi or something. And I do not know. And if it's a taxi, we do not know who else he was in touch with. We do not know what kind of taxi it was, whether it was an airport taxi. And we also know that this individual. 
uh, was in Ibadan. And what the driver did there in Ibadan, who else the driver may have been in touch with, we do not know. We also have a case in Lagos, who is not known to have traveled at all, who is not known to, who is not a, a contact of any known case in, America. in Ibadan. In the United States, they also have cases like that of people who never are not known to have been anywhere in China or to have been in touch with someone who traveled. So this case is still being looked into. I told NCDC to continue looking into it. But the indices we have now is that just like in Lagos, where we have a case confirmed positive of a person who has not traveled anywhere within several weeks, I think and who also is not known to be a contact of any of the cases we are looking at. Now, we also have a person here who is positive, but the one we are suspecting to be is negative. And remember also that the, the deceased person is said to have had another caregiver. caregiver who was even closer to the deceased, even closer because a caregiver, and that one is negative. So we are assuming things if we believe that he must have taken if that disease, disease must have been positive. That's an assumption, and, and that is not the way we are looking at it. Otherwise, the other person who is a caregiver, more intimate contact uh, clearly, would also be positive. But we are still trying to unravel the mystery around it. It's going to be part of the contact tracing that is going on, and this contact tracing will go to Ibadan, where we know that they spent time also. As for uh, winning the war, well, every country is, is struggling to deal with this disease. We know that uh, some countries were probably slow to actually realize the, uh, the problem. Others were very quick. Some countries have claimed that they have taken care of everyone at every country, that, that every case they found has been tracked and there are no, no deaths, no fatality, and they are effect, almost effectively blocked uh, uh, importation. In the news today, it is said that uh, China also had no new case, uh, so it looks like they have won. But there's also a warning against what they call re-importation, because people travel and move around, so you might have a new wave coming up. Now, we listen to all of these and we learn our lessons. We try to adapt all those to our situation, to our country. We look at our health system. Uh, we try to beef it up, to strengthen it up in the areas where we need to. And uh, I'm optimistic that if we continue to be vigilant and to uh, take all the measures uh, that our experts advise, because we are working with our experts, they advise us, then we shall also win. The president has set up this committee, Presidential Task Force on Control of COVID-19, which is also bringing all other factors, factors, uh, factors, uh, the uh, factors regarding flights into the country, the economy, the assets we have on ground, the strategy for uh, containment. We are talking about containment now, and then the strategy for uh, managing uh, the cases and also the what is the fallout from the cases because the economic fallouts that are involved. So I will believe that that will work. We have about 350 uh, in, uh, uh, intensive care units. And well, I can't give you the figure because we are not, but we have a good number of respirators and we, they are also on our shopping list. But I must also tell you that the cases we have treated so far did not require any respirator. And it is not every case, only a very few who require respirators, very few. And uh, probably there are those who already had, probably, those who probably had underlying illnesses that require, but not everyone, requ but definitely we are also keeping a good uh, uh, lookout for respirators. Uh, they are on the shopping list. And we also have a, a plans that if they are required anywhere, they can be moved from one place to the other to where they are needed. Because you have to use a strategy that is available to meet your needs. So if a place needs more respirators, we move them there. And if another place needs so, we, can, we are ready to be able to move respirators to where the need is. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, Mr. For Health. We've Thank come you. to the end of this press briefing.
You're watching Channels Television, your home for the news. A live broadcast from Abuja. The Ministry of Health's response to COVID-19 in Nigeria. And of course, dissemination of relevant information is critical to the war um, on COVID-19. As uh, Channels Television, our website, uh, .com has the latest. It's back to our regular programming. Up next is Business Incorporated. You've been watching a live Channels Television event.